Anyway, hey, good uh, morning. My name is Glenn Kate, and uh, I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. A little trivia about my, hey, St. Pete, there we got some Floridians here. A little trivia about my hometown is uh, we have the Guinness Book of World Records for the most number of consecutive days of sunshine at 768, over two years without uh, I know you say, well, the sun goes down at night. I know, but uh, this is basically continual days of sunny days. And um, in my hometown, known as the Sunshine City, I've had the opportunity to do some work with Wi-Fi in the nonprofit community. I'd like to share a little bit about that today. By the way, this is a condensed version of a podcast I did with Clear to Send a few months ago. Uh, Roel Dionisio and Francois is in the front. Francois, raise your hand there. If you haven't been checking out cleartosend.net podcast, they've got some great stuff out there, and I hope that you'll check it out. Um, we expect Wi-Fi everywhere, right? Uh, at hotels, uh, even when D Google DNS is not blocked. We expect it in shopping malls. We expect it at uh, places we go to eat. And we also expect it in the nonprofit places where we go, uh, places of worship, community centers, free health clinics. And sometimes we see Wi-Fi there and it's, sometimes it's not set up very well. And so the, you'll probably ask the same question that I ask myself, well, can I do something, can I give back? These organizations that give so much back to our communities, is there something I can do to give back to these uh, nonprofit organizations as well? And that kind of is the question that kind of got me started several years ago in my local church. Uh, great place, wonderful people, excellent Bible teaching, but the Wi-Fi was bad. And so I went to my pastor one day and I said, hey, pastor, you know the Wi-Fi sucks here? No, that didn't sound very spiritual. So I didn't say that to him. I said, hey, the Wi-Fi isn't working real well. Could I help out? And he said, yeah, sure, go ahead. and." Uh, Here's one of the things I learned about working with Wi-Fi in the nonprofit communities. He says, hey, do I have a budget? And um, that was his response. Um, <sighs> so this was one of several lessons I learned, and I'd like to share some of those other things with you in just a few minutes of what I learned about working, uh, putting Wi-Fi in for the nonprofit uh, community. So, but first of all, what does nonprofit mean? And this is a nonprofit. Actually, this is a profit. It's not a nonprofit. Thank you, Moses. But this is what we mean by nonprofit. It's an organization with the purpose of which is something other than making a profit. If they do make money, they pour back into that organization. They're not there to make a profit. Uh, Canada, I found a few different things registered charities, nonprofit organizations. In the EU, they have a term, uh, nonprofit making organizations. And if you work in a Hispanic country, uh, it's an organization sin fines de lucro. It's an organization without the end means of being financial gain. So, what kind of nonprofits are there? Places of worship, churches, mosques, synagogues, schools, community centers, free health clinics social service, welfare centers, museum, art galleries, fraternal organizations. You know about the nonprofit groups in your community, and I could add to that list as well. Um, so what kind of projects have I done? I've worked with some different churches I've been at. My wife is an uh, administrative assistant at a school, and so I've had a chance to put Wi-Fi in her school, worked with them. Uh, several churches, site design, um, did another church with a predictive model, and um, also had a chance to um, do my local church presently and putting a security appliance in, access points, because again, their Wi-Fi was very poorly uh, administered and set up. And then I got a little bit more work I'm doing at my wife's school. So how do you find a nonprofit project to work on? Well, it's the community center in your community. It is the place of worship where your family goes to church. Um, it is the... Um, place where the health clinic in your community, so someplace local. Then I like to have a contact there. I just like don't go in cold. Maybe I attend that place, that organization, or someone I know does. And here's the question to ask them. Um, How is your Wi-Fi performing? And if they say it's working well, you just go on your merry way. Maybe you've pulled out Insider and it's all messed up, right? But if they say it's working fine, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I do have a friend who counsels with CEOs in the United States, and he has this term, pain is a wonderful motivator. Okay, if it's painful enough, those people will want to change and get their Wi-Fi improved. So in a nutshell, you look at the community locale, you look at a personal contact you have there, and the third piece of the pie is poor Wi-Fi performance. And if all those things fit together, and they say, hey, can you help fix our Wi-Fi? then you have a project that you can work on. Um, how do you start 
a project. This isn't any different really than, in fact, I don't think you should treat a nonprofit organization when you work with their board of directors any different than you would with an organization that they're actually paying you to do the job. It's the same, treat them with the utmost professional respect and provide everything you would provide for a paying organization. Have a kickoff meeting with them. Uh, look at CD, CWDP study guide for a list of questions, how you can uh, perform, uh, the, uh, ask the right questions to the board of directors. Find a technical resource that you will do a knowledge transfer to. That's an important person. Tour the facility, take pictures, um, look, at the, look at the opportunities there. Document your proposal, just like you do a professional documentation, and be sure to include the bill of materials. They need to know how much it's going to cost. And please state that you're going to do this in your spare time. Uh, it's not a 40-hour week job. You have other full-time jobs, right? So be sure to tell them that it's just going to be something you do in your spare time. But the big question, you know what the, end, you know what the question I'm going to ask, right? The big question, and this is it, how do nonprofits pay for equipment? Well, first of all, after you do your proposal, they may have something budgeted already for that. You don't know, so just go ahead and ask them. Or they may say, hey, Glenn, that's a great proposal. We really need that, but we can't afford it. Ask them the next question, how much can you afford? They may be able to come up with 50%. And if they can, awesome. But if they come to you and say, we can't afford any of this, that's where you gotta put on your creative funding hat. So you put that on and go to your VAR. VARs love to give out to nonprofit organizations. Sometimes they just don't know where to put their money. You've got an opportunity. It's a win win. Win for the VAR, win for the nonprofit. Uh, free vendor equipment. You know the story. The church I'm working right now, I asked my pastor, hey, listen to this webinar. They're going to give you a free eight port POE switch. He said, I don't even know what that is. I said, I don't care. Just listen to it. Do the online thing. In the mail, a week later comes this free eight port POE switch. Hey, guess what? We've got the fellowship hall now. Got the switch for that. So listen to ven uh, vendor, um, free vendor equipment. Foundations, philanthropic organizations. I found $3,000 at a group. I just had to look for it. Uh, personally, you might want to give. Family members might want to give as well. But the bottom line is that funding prevents, but adds a unique dimension to working with nonprofit organizations. However, it's part of the process. Realize that from the get-go. Don't let it rise up and bite you in the butt. Realize that, okay, this is something I've got to keep in mind as I work with this, uh, work with this project. Obstacles. There are things that you have to keep in mind. What, what can you do and cannot do? First church group I worked on, the PC network was a mess. I found someone who did the domain controllers and got everything upgraded from Windows 98, and then I worked on the infrastructure. So decide what you can and cannot do. Do you pull and punch down Ethernet? I know this is a wireless conference, but I learned how to do it on YouTube. Maybe you can do the same thing. Get volunteers to help. And if this nonprofit groups have POS uh, uh, units, you might have to do a PCI DSS report. If it's a health clinic, HIPAA rules apply to the US. If you're not sure about any of this, please uh, ask the directors. What are the benefits from giving to, to a nonprofit organization? First of all, you just designed an awesome network because you're a wireless engineer, right? You did it right. It wasn't a bunch of APs they bought at Best Buy. It is basically a wonderful, excellent wireless uh, or, um, network that you have designed. They may have an e-letter. They may want to put your picture in there. Cool. If they do, take a bow. You've earned it. CWNP gives continuing ed credits for doing some of your, write it up, put it on your profile, and see if you can get some credit work. And you know, you get a really good feeling. Uh, these organizations are giving so much back to our communities. The Bible says it's more blessed to give and to receive. You just get a good feeling. You've given a little bit of your skills to a group that really needs some help. Some final thoughts here. Use a cloud-based WLAN network. You don't want to have to drive on campus to do all this. Um, stick to smaller nonprofits. Do your knowledge transfer, and be sure to finish the project. Don't leave them hanging. Let me tell you a little bit about Family Promise, and I have one more slide. Family Promise is a group that helps homeless families get off the streets, find places to live, and get into employment. We cooperate with five other churches in our community with Family Promise. And so we house this family once a week uh, for every six weeks. During the day, mom and dad get skill training. The kids go to school. But when they come back, and we house them in our second floor of our education wing, um, but it's like your kids, right? When they come home, don't they need internet to do their homework sometimes? 
mom and dad want to continue their skill training. So I was able to, with our church, help install Wi-Fi up in the second floor of our education building so they now can get that work done. That's a little thing, but helping a homeless family get off the streets, that's a very cool thing. And that's really a wonderful opportunity to do. And you think, well, I can't help all of these groups. I can't help thousands of different nonprofits. And that's true, but could you help one? You know the story about the little boys on the seashore and he sees all these starfish that are on the, sea full, uh, on the, sea, on the beach and they're dying in the sun. So he reaches down, picks one up and tosses it in the water and reaches down, picks another one, tosses it in. A man saw this boy walking along and he said, hey, little boy, look, you don't understand. There's thousands of starfish here and this beach goes on for miles. You can't save them all. And the boy said to the, the man, said, mister, you're right, I can't save them all. But then he looked at the one in his hand and he said, you know, but I can save this one. He tossed it in the water and gave that starfish new life. Now maybe you can't help a thousand different organizations that do nonprofit work in the community with your Wi-Fi skills, but can you help one? Can you help one? And can you give back to the community just like that, that organization is giving back to the community? Thank you very much. Thank you.